today we're gonna talk about Troy Smith, man, and trust me, bro, there is a ton to this story. One of the main things that sticks out to me is the role that his youth coach ends up playing in his life. I mean, trust me, it's beyond probably anything you've ever heard of. But it encompasses one of the main things that I love about sports in general, how to kind of bring people together. And I've done this multiple times in the past, but I always like to just say, yo, if you are a youth football coach, youth, youth sports coach, period. Yo, thank y'all for what y'all do, man. And remember, y'all make a huge impact on these young kids' lives. So keep doing what you do. Salute. All right, now before we jump into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an app that has access to tickets from all over the internet. And they give that access to you right at your fingertips, making buying simple. They put a score of 1 to 100 on each ticket, letting you know the quality of the deal that you get. One of the doper features is you can preview the view from any seat that you may be select. That way you already know what it's gonna look like before you even get there. So if you plan on attending any game, click the link in the description, download the app, and make sure you use my code FLIMLO for $20 off your first purchase. Troy Smith grew up in Ohio and bruh, he had a tough upbringing. How tough? We're gonna get into it, but let's start in a little bit more of a happy place. Troy grew up right next to a football field and he played over there as often as he could. But a lot of times he would end up actually stopping what he was doing to watch the uh, Glenville A's, which is a midget football team in Ohio, practice and do their thing. Now, they call it midget leagues. Where I'm from, just call it the youth football league, but like midget league, come on, man. Anyway, so he'll stop and watch them practice every day. Now, eventually, the coach went ahead and invited Troy to come on over and play. You know, you're always out here. You might as well join the team. But you got to get your parents' consent, and Troy's mom wouldn't let him play because she felt it was too dangerous. But Troy's youth coach was... He was an old school coach, man. Goes to Troy's house, sits in there with his mom, almost like a college coach recruiting. Reassures her, let her know. Troy's in good hands, it's safe, this is how we do everything, boom, boom, boom. And she eventually does decide to go ahead and let Troy play. Now that coach is named Urban White, and he's way more essential to the story than just that one thing. But just that in itself, honestly, was huge because that could have been a note from Troy's mom. He could have never played football. Like, real talk. Like, that one moment of him taking that extra step and going to Troy's house and sitting down with his mom literally changes the course of Troy's life. Now, when Troy joined the team, he played running back and tight end of all positions. That's just hilarious because Troy grew to be like 5'11". <laughs> but Coach White saw more in Troy, man. He felt like Troy was a leader, and he went to him and told him, yo, you can lead this team. I want you to play quarterback. And even at that young age, man, Troy bought into that, became the quarterback of the team, and of course, never switched positions. But during this whole time, man, Troy's mom was struggling. She was a single parent finances were scarce and she was rarely at home leaving Troy and his sister there most of the time completely unattended like coach Urban had been noticing that something clearly wasn't right in the home for quite some time and after Troy got stranded a few times at different games didn't have any way to get home his youth coach stepped up again and took on a responsibility that that really wasn't his responsibility. After the county stepped in and was gonna take Troy and his sister from his mom, Coach White actually steps up and takes Troy in as his foster kid. Now, mind you, Coach White got a wife and four kids already at this point, but they bring Troy into the family and treat him like one of their own. Now, Troy's sister actually goes and stays with their aunt. Now, Troy stayed with Coach White and his family for four years, and, and here's what he had to say about that time period in his life. Everything happens for a reason. When I ended up with the Whites, that happened for a reason. They taught me the morals and the values that I needed to have in my life, and it helped me to get to where I am now. Now, over the course of that four years, Troy's mom was able to get her life together. Here's what she had to say. My children were the number one thing that made me want to get it together. It took a lot of self-reflection, a lot of praying, a lot of crying, and actually a lot of laughing. So they get through that situation, man. It was four years. Troy's mom gets clean. She gets financially stable. She takes Troy and his sister back. And everything just wasn't peaches, but, you know, they were back together. And she stayed, you know, straight and stable really from that point on. Now, Troy was still a kid, and he still had quite a few issues. In high school, he actually got kicked off the basketball team for elbowing another player in the head during the game. That's when he transfers to another school, Glenville High, links up with a receiver that was pretty good. I mean, decent speed. A dude by the name of 
Ted Ginn Jr. Now, of course, these two were going to play together at Ohio State, and they played on the same team in the league for a spell as well. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, man. Troy really came into his own as a quarterback at Glenville. They were actually coached by Ted Ginn's dad, Ted Ginn Sr. In 2001, as a junior in high school, Troy was invited to the Elite 11 camp. Now, obviously, this is a huge deal. I mean, 80% of today's NFL quarterbacks are Elite 11 quarterback. 80%, that's crazy. And also, I got that stat from the intro to the most recent Elite 11 series on NFL Network. If y'all haven't seen it, it's pretty dope. I would recommend it. Now, Troy didn't win the competition, but he definitely got some love for having a good performance at the Elite 11 camp, man. He was there with Vince Young, Drew Stanton. And in case y'all are curious, a quarterback named Ben Olsen actually won the competition. But when he got to college, he had an injury play career and it didn't really work out. So the next year, 2002, Troy commits to Ohio State. Fun fact, he literally accepted the very last scholarship that Ohio State had available for that season. Let's be real though. Some other dude probably got bumped down to a preferred walk-on. In 2003, Troy played a little bit of running back and did some kick return dude. But it wasn't until halfway through his sophomore year, 2004, that Troy actually got his first start at quarterback. Now, out of the five games he played as a starter, he won four of them. And most importantly, he beat Michigan. Now, shortly after this, Troy was suspended for the bowl game and for the first game of the next season for accepting $500 from a boost. I don't even need to do any in-depth research on this one. I, I mean, I know what happened. Man comes in, wins four out of five games, beats Michigan. Diehard Ohio State fans slide him at least $500. I mean, nothing to see here. Let's move on. So the next year, after his one-game suspension, Troy comes back as the starter and leads Ohio State to a great season. They only lost two games, won the Fiesta Bowl, and Troy was named MVP of that game. He had a good year, man. 2,300 passing yards, 16 passing touchdowns, with only four interceptions. He had an additional 600 yards on the ground and another 11 touchdowns. But this season would actually pale in comparison to what he was about to do in his junior year. In 2006, Troy Smith nearly doubled his passing touchdown number, throwing for 30 TDs and only six interceptions. One of the things to note is that year, Troy's rushing attempts were actually cut in half. And you can see from the touchdown numbers, he relied a lot more on his arm. Troy Smith took home the 2006 Heisman Trophy Award and got 91.6% of the first place votes, which set a damn record. Even better than that, man, Troy's mom, who had to give him up all those years ago, was there that day to see her son come full circle. The kid who she thought was too small to play football and might get hurt when he was younger was now winning the ultimate college football award. Now, Troy got Ohio State to the national championship but got completely shut down by the Florida Gators. Check this out, man. Troy actually had more sacks taken in that game than he had completions. That's a real stat, man. Four completions, he got sacked five times. Ohio State lost that game 41-14. And that really did hurt Troy's draft stock. That and the fact that he's 5'11". So the Heisman Trophy winner fell all the way down to the end of the fifth round in the 2007 draft, where he was eventually picked up by the Baltimore Ravens. Troy actually got his first regular season playing time as an NFL rookie in the fourth quarter of a game against the Colts on December 9th. 2007. He played pretty well, man. Completed three or five pass attempts and ran a six-yard touchdown for his first NFL score. And Troy would come in late in a couple other games and play pretty well, you know, in a limited role. And that had fans wanting to see, yo, what can he do as a starter? So when they got their wish, bro. Week 16 of that same season, Troy got his first start. To put it lightly, he didn't play well, bro. He turned the ball over multiple times and the Ravens lost. But the very next week, Baltimore playing the Steelers. Troy probably flashed back to the first time he played Michigan in college, really got himself going in another huge rivalry game and led Baltimore to a victory over the Steelers. Now here's the thing, that was Baltimore's first win that year since week six. Troy threw for 171 yards and one touchdown. Now the next year, Troy was ready to put in his bid to be the starting quarterback, man. 2008, he's in a quarterback battle in the preseason, but then, out of nowhere, he's diagnosed with a condition called Lemierre Syndrome. Now, this most often develops as a complication of a bacterial sore throat infection in young, otherwise completely healthy adults. It's a serious condition that can lead to further systematic complications, such as bacteria in the blood. Largely due to this, 
rookie quarterback Joe Flacco ends up getting the starting job. Now for the 2008-2009 season, Troy served mostly as a backup. And after being released by the Raiders, he actually signed with the 49ers, reuniting with his old college and high school teammate, Ted Ginn Jr. Now here's a very interesting fact, okay? In 2010, bruh, seven years ago, Troy Smith became the first black quarterback to start for the 49ers. I'm like, in 2010? Damn. When Alex Smith came back from injury, he got his starting spot back. But Troy has started five games and went three and two in those five games. Now, obviously, that's about average. And it's a small sample size, only five games. But in the 49ers' other 11 games, they actually managed the same amount of wins that Troy got in five. So Troy got three wins, and in the other 11 games, the 49ers got a total of three wins. So of course, they went six and 10, and Troy got half of their wins while only starting a third of their game. So at this point, he's clearly a damn good backup and probably a pretty good starter as well if he had been given an opportunity to start for a full season and get a real sample size. But after the season, the 49ers decided to part ways with Troy. And in 2011, he was playing in the USFL. He came back to the NFL and had a short stint with the Steelers after that. Then he moved on to Canadian football, played in the CFL for a few years, and, and then retired from football at that point. Today, Troy's got two kids and has advocated for the passage of the Fit Kids Act. The act requires school districts to report on students' physical activity and to give health and nutritional information to the kids. Now, Troy ain't perfect. He got a DUI earlier this year, but hell, who hasn't? So I don't care about that at all, but I still feel like it should be included in here because it is public knowledge. Anyway, Troy Smith has had an incredible journey of life, man. Being separated from his mom, elite 11 camp, elbowing a cat in the head, winning the Heisman Trophy, diagnosed with a rare disease, playing in the NFL. I mean, this cat's had a full life and he's only 33 years old. But just looking at how his life started out and how he has setbacks, the thing I get from him, man, is just don't let nobody try to limit you or put you in a box. And if they try, just tell them. Yeah.